Mike Picelli here. Thanks for tuning into this lesson. I'll be talking about the Beatles recording of something that they did between January and August of 1969. George Harrison wrote the song on piano during the White Album sessions, so much of the song was finished by September of 1968, and he got the first line from a James Taylor song, Something in the Way She Moves. Beatles were in the studio on January 28th of 1969, uh, which was the last day of the re recording of the Let It Be album, and John Lennon suggests that they work on something a little bit. Uh, nothing really comes, comes to pass, but John did come up with the line, Don't want to leave her now, you know I believe and how. So that was his contribution to something. By February 25th of 69, George Harrison's uh, 26th birthday, the song was completed in George's mind, and he did a demo of it in the key of A, which he gave to Joe Cocker. Joe Cocker ends up recording it in the key of A and releases it on his album, uh, November of 69, which was a month after Abbey Road came out. So now on April 16th, uh, the band begins to seriously work on the song. They record 13 takes with John on bass guitar, uh, Paul on drums, George on electric guitar, and George Martin on piano. But of the 13 takes, none are worthy of overdubs, so they scrap that. May 2nd, they're back in the studio, EMI uh, Studio 3, with a different producer. They had Chris Thomas as producer. They do 36 takes of something, and they deem that take 36 is the best. For this session, they had Paul on bass, Ringo on drums, George on electric guitar playing through a Leslie cabinet, and uh, John Lennon was on piano. May 5th, they're at Trident Studios, and they do overdubs on take 36, which they thought was the best take. This time, Paul worked on the bass, and he simplified it per George's request. George refines his Leslie guitar part, and that was when he recorded his guitar solo. July 11th, EMI Studio uh, 2. Uh, that was the first time George sings something, and on that session, Billy Preston added organ. July 16th, back EMI Now Studio 3, George resang the song. That's the final version of the song. He double tracks some of his vocals. Uh, Paul adds harmony, and he double tracks some of his harmony. George, Paul, and Ringo do some hand claps, and Ringo added uh, extra percussion and cymbals. Now, because of that, that wiped out much of John Lennon's piano part. So you only hear John Lennon on the song playing a few single note piano uh, uh, parts uh, on the first verse. They had filled the 8-track tape machine, so now they had to bounce to another 8-track to make room for uh, George, George Martin's orchestra score. And that was going to be um, 12 violins, 4 viola, 4 cellos, and, and, and a string bass. And they do that string session on August 15th, 1969. Now, George wanted to redo his solo, rumor has it, and rumor has it that he, because of track, uh, limited tracks available, he had to do it on the same track while, as the orchestra. But I've got stems of the song, and I have a, a separate stem of George playing on his own track with a little bass, that, uh, extra bass that Paul added. So we'll never know exactly when he did that solo. Uh, but during that string uh, session also, that's where Paul overdubs those cool descending piano parts. Uh, the final mix was done on August 19th. George Harrison wasn't there, so once again during a mix, a rhythm guitar part gets buried. Luckily, like I said, I have stems, and I have a stem of Ringo's drum on a separate track, and I can hear bleed of George's rhythm guitar track on that Ringo drum track, so that's what I'll teach to you. Um, something was the only George Harrison song to be an A-side of a Beatles single, and there's more than 200 cover versions of it, and it was released October 1st, 1969, of course, on the Abbey Road album. So I think that's the backstory. Let's get started. George Harrison is playing his 1957 Les Paul through a Leslie cabinet on something. This is a slightly younger Les Paul, and I'm playing through a Leslie simulator in Pro Tools. All right, here's the chords uh, you're going to need to play something. You'll need this F, an E flat. You'll need a G over D, first position C chord. A C major 7, a C7, you'll also need a first position D, a 
a D7, and a G. Now for that descending A minor, he plays first position like this, A minor, A minor major seven, A minor seven, and you're also gonna need a G over here, and an A. Now you can definitely tell it's George Harrison playing rhythm because it's entirely different than the way John plays rhythm. Um, I guess I'll just play it for you and check out some of the syncopation. Help me out, Ringo. Nice and slow. Three, four. Second verse is very similar. Uh, charts and tabs at MikePacelli.com if you want to get it exactly like uh, George played. I wrote out every single measure. And again, the second verse is, is very close to the first one. There's just a few uh, variances, and you can see how it's done when I do these sound like at the end. Okay, now going up into the bridge, comes off of the main riff thing. I... All the way up to A here and then some 16th notes. So in time, help me again, Ringo. Two, three. All right, that's the part going up uh, into the bridge. Now for the bridge, we need a couple new chords. You'll need an A. Now, the next chord is C sharp minor over G sharp. Could look like this. But George, plays it almost like it's an A major 7th voicing, like this. But this would be the third, you know, the bottom part of a C sharp minor. Like 3, 5 root. 3, 5 root. But it's voiced like a uh, A major 7th. But really, again, it's a C sharp minor over G sharp. Then you need an F sharp minor. And then it's really an A over E. Then he plays a bar D. G to A. And the rhythm is a little different. The rhythm is like this. Uh, let's help me out again, Ringo. Four. <clears throat> Hear that? Second part, um, I think one, let's see. One different chord. Yeah, you're going to go up to C. You're going to go all the way up to the C. And the rhythm is like this. Similar to the first rhythm, uh, second part of the, of, the, of the bridge, it's like this. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can do the whole bridge for you in time. Two, Again, charts and tabs at MikePacelli.com if you want to get it exactly like George Harrison. Now on the solo, it's pretty straight strumming until they change it in the bar, what is it, one, two, three, four, five, bar nine, bar, no, bar seven. So on the solo he plays. Ah, 
There's something new, this D7. And then a G in 16th notes. Now here, the rhythm changes a little bit on that A minor, A minor, major seven stuff. It's like this. And back down to C. I did that pretty fast, so let me do the, the solo section in time. Three, four. Do, 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 do. Is there is a couple? Is there a new chord? Oh, the only thing on the last verse is when he gets to the G, he plays this G, and he powers through it on measure six of the of the third verse. It's like, and at the ending, uh, A minor again. This time he plays an A, a, a D nine. Let me go that far. Last verse, three, four. Same basic move. Oh, he's gonna play a D9 this time though. D9. So it's. And then it ends it. All the way up to this A. F. Really great part, and again, if I went too fast, you can download the chart and see exactly what George Harrison played uh, at MikePacelli.com. George Harrison played his Les Paul for the lead guitar parts, and you can tell there's a lot of punching in because there's different tones on different sections of the parts I'm going to show you. Um, but the main riff sounds like this. What I suggest for you to get the tone is to overdrive your amp or use an overdrive pedal just enough so that if you turn your volume down you can clean it up quite a bit to get uh, some of the clean sounds you need on this part. Uh, so for the main riff, the first thing you want to do is make sure you get kind of a George Harrison vibrato, which is like a side to side. And it's pretty quick. It's not... It's... Like that. Um, now, bending that 12th fret is important too. You don't want to bend it sharp. You, the sound is basically... Right? So you want to bend that 12th fret up just a half step just to get the C sound. So you play the first note and you have to bend and release. So it's not, it's, see that? So you, before you, before you uh, play that 12th fret, bend it up and then chromatic. And that's the main riff. Better to be flat than sharp on that on that bend. Okay, then something in the way she uh, measure three. He plays a little C major seventh. He, he goes like on beat four to a C seven. All right, and then da -da 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 -da, plays an F. Walks it down to like a partial D seven. And then on this G, it's a really nice part. And again, you have to clean up your guitar to get 
Actually, you can go in the middle pickup and kind of get it nice to get um, that part. And that's like, um, it's kind of like an A minor seventh. So you got an A, a G, and a C, and you play A, G, C, A, and then slide it up to get a B and a D. And he plays a straight A minor and some, some trills from D to C, which is fret seven to fret five on the G string. And then one more up. So in time, here's a, here's a here's a verse. One. Second verse. Second verse, he holds that note, he plays uh, he again, thanks Ringo. He plays again a uh, on the and of two, second measure, plays a C major seven to a C seven, so like one, two. Oops. One, two. And you can tell those C major sevens are strummed up. Two. This G, he plays root fifth, and then he plays uh, again like A minor, but here. Almost the same. It's playing it, uh, you can tell in the middle strings. Now, in this descending, he plays your normal, uh, you know, stairway to heaven kind of, kind of uh, A minor, like this, you know, to A minor major seventh, to A minor seventh, to D9, and the rhythm is. Slides up and gets those two notes. And the signature uh, riff. Mm. This time he slides up to fret uh, 14 on the B string. So. And then that bridge part, he doesn't play. There's no lead guitar part on it. It's just it's organ and piano and strings and vocals. Uh, and after the bridge comes the solo. And uh, let me play you the solo first and then we'll talk about it. Solo goes like this. Three, uh, let's play it with it. Ringo. Three, four, Here's some things to think about during a solo. Um, you know, it starts on the D string, uh, 12th fret. Now this next bend of this 12th fret G string, you want to get a nice whole step bend, because you want the sound to be. So. Then, get a B flat. And on these, you slide down on the C. Down to. Bend this up maybe with the first finger. Now the way I think about these, these, uh, these trills or bends is like the first one is three. All right, that's seven fret to five fret of the G string. 
Second one is four. <laughs> so three. And then two. And then this part of the lick is, is just felt. It's hard to write it out, but it's like when you do two, you go. And then the lick. So it's tasty and so beautiful. Uh, now we're at the third verse, right? And uh, he's up there. He hits the C, he doesn't play. He doesn't play until the F. He plays on the F. That's A minor, two, three, four, one. <clears throat> okay, now when he gets up to that C sharp, there's a little double stop. He plays C sharp and G sharp. Down to F sharp, so. And then the riff. Slide into the B, and then a double stop. Get a G and a C at the end. Again, charts and tabs at mikepicelli.com probably explain it a lot better than I can explain it. Okay, I've done the sound alike, and um, although I went through the painstaking uh, effort to do the strings, you know, all the violins and the cello and the viola and, and that, and I also did the organ, I did the piano, uh, the mix I've got for you here is more like a guitar mix, so you can really hear how the two guitar parts fit together, so let's check that out. Enjoy that, and like I always say, learn both parts, play along with my sound alike, and you'll get it just like the Beatles.
If you'd like to drop me a line, do so at MikePacelli.com. That's where the charts and tabs for all my video lessons are available for you to download. So have fun playing this great old song. And until next time, I'm Mike Pacelli. Thanks for hanging out with me.